guys, Jolly here. Welcome back to Gypsy Rose Papery. Welcome to all my new and current subscribers. Welcome to the Paper Gypsy Tribe. Today I am going to film yet another golden book tutorial because I had a poll and you all said you wanted to see this. So here we go. I'm thinking that this will be in two parts because it gets a little messy when we start organizing signatures and um, sewing in the signatures and all that. So today I'm going to show you how I take it apart, how I cut everything down, and the kind of spine that I make, which is like a soft spine. So let's get started. So first we're going to go over supplies for those of you that want to join in. Obviously, you will need a scissor or some kind of cutting tool. Something to measure with, which is a new thing for me because we all know I hate to measure. But for the purpose of this tutorial, you will need to measure some. So just keep that in mind. You will need some glue. I prefer fabric tack You can use whatever glue is going to give you a nice strong adherence because we are going to be gluing a lot. So keep that in mind. And the glue has to withstand whatever volume you will put into your December daily throughout the month of December. So again, keep that in mind. The other thing you will need is some fabric. You can use the same kind or mix it up. I'm mixing it up. I have pre-cut this fabric for the sake of timeliness. So this is the fabric that I will use for my makeshift spine. And this is just two pieces of like scrap uh, fabric that I'm using to create a closure. You do not have to create a closure if you don't want to. This is an extra step but because I'm a chunky journaler and I love to pack stuff in there I'm gonna need something to kind of hold it all together if you know what I'm saying so that's that and then finally you are going to need a file folder or something of similar weight and flexibility because this is actually the base of our spine so go ahead and grab all those supplies if you're gonna join in I mean, back here. So I have moved everything to the side and we're just going to focus on our book because we have to take this book apart. And so what I like to do is kind of try to find the middle or somewhere in the middle because you're going to apply pressure right at the middle starting from the top and sort of very gently press outwards okay you do not want to tear um the book i know some people just cut it right off um here i don't like to do that because i want my pages to be intact i do not want to have to cut all the pages inside of the book so again just be careful when you're kind of trying to take it apart ideally you could also you could peel away this foil part or you could feel for where the staples are at and kind of try and lift up those staples carefully because you do not want to cut yourself practice safety don't be me so okay and then we can try and pull them out on this side if you think that like prying it apart is gonna break your your book because you don't you want you don't want that you don't want the book to break so once you lift up your prongs it's a little bit easier to kind of apply pressure and separate your book so the pages are nice and intact and also your spine is intact so Try to take the pages out nice and gently. And yes, this is time consuming, but I hate cutting down the pages so much that I'm willing to put in the time. And then we can sort of break up 
that foil and just clean it up. You don't have to remove it completely because we're going to cover it up, but you don't want it to be like raised. You want to remove as much of it as you can. You want to be extremely careful because this is the pretty side. This is the side with a beautiful color illustration and you don't want to rip out any of this because we're not going to cover fabric all the way out here. We're only going to cover with fabric up until this point. And I am filming at night, people, because the sun is gone by like five o'clock. But luckily, my friend Lori at Ivy Shutters gave me a hot tip on this ring light that holds your phone and is like a camera stand in one. So now I can film at night and it's nice and bright. Hopefully. Hopefully that translates to you guys but i will link it down below in case anyone is looking to film at night so oh my god these illustrations are like literally the cutest okay so next you're gonna want to decide how wide you want your spine i'm gonna go for really wide i'm gonna go for like three and a quarter because i know for my last december daily I didn't account for that and let me go get it. This is my last December daily. And so I keep it in this leather cover, um, but it is, I mean, if we measure this, geez, this is like, if I squeeze it really tight, it's about three. So I figured that a three and a quarter would give me ample room. Um, but yeah, I like to stuff, stuff things in here. So next you're going to ask yourself how flexible you want your spine to be. One layer of like a file folder card stock is sufficient for most books, but because I figure that in my December daily, I'm really going to pack in the girth. So I think... Uh, two would be sufficient. So I already pre-cut those to save you guys from watching me like speed cut or something. But three and a quarter and two together are pretty, pretty flexible. Okay, um, so I'm going to glue two of these together and that's going to be my makeshift spine. How cute is that? That's going to be a big book. All right. So I'll go glue these and I'll be back. Okay, so that's all glued. So now we are going to start constructing or reconstructing this book with our new makeshift spine. This is my piece of fabric. And you notice that I cut it like extra long. This is why. I'm going to show you before I actually go ahead and do it. But you're going to put your spine there. Okay. And when you're measuring this and you're cutting your fabric to size, account for the width of the spine and then add however many inches you're going to want to overlap on this side. I only needed to overlap over the parts that had the red foil. The rest I want to leave as is. Okay. So that's what we're going to be looking at. It's just that part. Um, and yeah, you can see that it pretty much covers all of it there. So, so we're going to makeshift, right? We're going to makeshift to make this book. So I'm going to leave room for the book to bend. Okay, let's pretend. And then I'm going to want to fold this in, this little piece of fabric down here because then this is going to be the inside of our spine and it's going to fold here and then we're going to do this and we're going to do this if that makes sense okay so let's go ahead and do that you want to make sure that you cover the inside and the outside but before we glue this part let's just glue the spine accounting for that half inch on either side 
and you want a nice even layer and make sure you're not cheap because you want that fabric to be nice and flush and flat because it's going to be the outside of your spine and you don't want it to look kind of wonky you know so just do a nice even layer that we are going to then spread out nice and even with our finger or spatula or credit card or whatever you want i personally just use my finger and then just make sure you smooth that out you can use a bone folder if you need to and make sure that just sits and dries for a second so now that is nice and flush against your spine and now we have decisions to make more decisions to make so this is our back cover. Perfect. And this is our front cover. And we want to attach a closure. Okay. Um, if you have a uh, fabric that has orientation, make sure you're going to orient it the right way. But we're going to want to sew this here before we glue it onto the cover because that's going to be our closure and then it'll close all around the book if that makes sense so let's go ahead and sew that we're going to sew it to the outside because we want this nice and flat to glue against the book cover so we're going to sew it to the outside so i'm going to use a nice sturdy zigzag stitch and I won't make it too uh, high or tall because I want it to not take up too much of that space. And I don't want it to sew onto the cardboard. I want it to sew just on the outside here. So that should be good. I have it on. If you have a brother, um, I have the position on 1.4 and then like the height of the stitch at 2.0 sorry so again don't forget which side is going to be your back cover side it's this one right and then you want it somewhere in the middle remember you do not want to stitch the cardboard remember do not stitch the cardboard <laughs> okay here we go Fingers crossed. And then because we don't know how fat your book's going to be, backstitch. All right. That wasn't that hard. So cut any extra stringage away so that is very nice and sturdy on there okay so now we're gonna do this we are not going to put glue on the book can you see that okay all right okay we are going to put glue on the fabric why are we doing that because for it to be glued flush it's neater if you do it on the fabric let me demonstrate so remember to well actually you can glue a little bit on the actual book um but you mostly want to the edge to be uh on the fabric because otherwise the, the edge is going to start rolling in so let's see you want to make sure that the edge has glue on the fabric okay and then your book can have glue towards the inside and you can 
get as close to that edge as you'd like. Just be mindful because when you put that fabric on, you don't want glue seeping out because then it's going to create a really sloppy look. Okay. And try not to get glue on your cover. So again, allow for that um, space so that the book can open. And then just kind of press down. And then let me take a look at our handiwork. So this is, I don't mind it, but see how the glue kind of seeped? That's why you don't want to put too much glue on the um, book itself. But it's fine. I don't mind it. If anything, we can like put glitter or something on there, but just be mindful of that. But see how nice it opens and closes. And we have our little sash. Pretty cool. And next we're going to do our other side. And same principle. Um, you want to put glue, not too much glue. We're going to learn from our little mistake on the other side. Just a little bit of glue on the edge. And then can do some glue here, which we will spread out. And this is going to be hard for me to see, but you want to make sure again you leave that space. careful and be mindful <laughs> that you glue it the right amount away on the first try because once fiber tack seals you're in trouble so there we go see we learned from our mistakes it doesn't have glue marks but it doesn't really bother me but if you're a perfectionist which i can be you can like you know emboss on there or something to hide it. So we are looking very good already. If you have any spots where the glue didn't adhere, you just want to go ahead and put a little bit of glue on there so that it does. This side, this side was pretty good though. All right. So we're almost done, you guys. So now we're going to glue this part on the inside. Um, and it's almost flush, but we're not gonna even worry about that because we can cut off the excess later. You're first going to glue your shortest part, okay? And then we can go ahead and glue this big part down because what we want is to create a, a seamless look. And so that's why we leave this fabric to be flush at the edge of the book at the bottom where really no one's gonna see, especially when you add pages, it's gonna be virtually invisible, so. I hope I'm in frame, but basically here, you're going to want to add the glue on the fabric and it's fine if it like gets gloppy because this is the inside and plus this part will be completely covered by the top fabric. So don't worry about like getting too technical and too perfectionist about this part. It'll be fine. So we're going to glue this in, okay, and you want to kind of squeeze it into your crevice there because you want there to be still movement. You don't want any air spaces in between here, okay. And 
And again, you can use a bone folder if you prefer that. So now we are going to turn her over. Now we're going to do this big part. So this big part, you're going to add the glue on the edges on the fabric, but you're gonna cover the spine like we did for the other side and spread it out and then do a little bit on the inside and spread it out and a little bit on the inside and spread it out. Just like we did the outside, except this is gonna be the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I'm sorry that part of it will not be in frame. Okay, so we are almost done here. So now this excess fabric, we can just very carefully cut it. And then if you have anything like this, like I cut it a little bit wider towards that bottom part, I'm just going to go ahead and take some pretty ribbon and glue that on there. So we are pretty much done. And for those of you that are like, well, that spine looks pretty, pretty hard to me. It's not. Look how cool. It is a very smushed. So we put our pages back for safekeeping because if you're anything like me, if you do not put these pages right back in this book, they will be lost. So the pages fit perfectly flush and they'll probably even have more room because when this spine curves out when you start adding stuff in here then you'll have more space um, away from the edge of the book there but see how cool is our little book and that spine is beautiful i wanted to play on the spine it already had which was that like red foil and then our closure Go something like this and of course I made it extra long because I don't know how fat this book is gonna get but it'll be something like that so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and that it wasn't too like sort of convoluted um, I really like the soft spine I think it helps add more stuff um, but yeah, how cute is our little golden book. So next part, I will show you like the papers that I choose and um, the actual sewing in. Now, I don't really do like the buttons on the spine or anything. I think it kind of complicates things, but they do look really cute. And if that's your thing, then you do you. No one can tell you how to make your own December daily. That is entirely up to you. So again, I hope you guys have a great night. I hope you enjoyed this nighttime filming of The World Needs Another Golden Book tutorial. I love you so much and I will see you on the next one. Bye.